Romans 1.17, every good gift and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turn. Mike. Yeah, I just kept hearing two words, just they put, they put. Or Hebrew is be still. <laughs> yeah. During worship, I uh, was lifted up into the ceiling and I could look down on no faces or anything, but there was just a lot of light. A lot of light. So be close to it. Light takes away the darkness. More light, less dark. Luminators for it. LEDs. the Lord. All right, let's go to the table. Communion. Maury.
Hallelujah, family. Hallelujah. Um, you know, as, as, as pastor, when pastor asked me to do this uh, communion today, it came to thought, my thoughts that uh, was given to me, that uh, there's nothing good in me without Jesus. You know, it's like, I mean, I wouldn't, really didn't care much about anybody or anything. You know, maybe under the law, as I was taught, grew up in church and was taught under the law, you know, you're supposed to do good, but it's not about being under the law. It's about wanting to do good because of Christ in us. Um, you know, and I pray that I, that our lives are all changed with having Christ in us and follow him and have his character in us. It was uh, given, me to this, given to me this morning, I believe, to read Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. You know, a couple people here even spoke that on the word, given word. Um, life. You know, Jesus has given us the, his body, the anointing, because of his death on the cross. And only because of his sacrifice. You know, his life was poured out for us. You know, and he gives us that eternal life, that eternal salvation. On the night that he was betrayed, he met with his disciples. He said, this is my body that's given to you. Take and eat of it. It was broken and beaten for you. He passed her on the cup. He said, this represents my blood, which is the new covenant. Be shed for you. Pour it out as a drink offering. Take and drink of it. We thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice, for your life. Uh, 
um, you would have them just that you would speak to them, Lord, that they would reach out to you for the comfort, Lord, and we just ask that you would minister to them at this difficult time. In Jesus' name, amen. Yep. What's up, uh, Angelique, for continued healing? Amen. Yeah. Father, we just lift up Angelique and we just pray, Lord, that you would continue the healing process in her, Father, and uh, that she would soon be walking and running and jumping and dancing again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, Father, we just pray for this baby that's to come today. Father, we just ask her, um, her to be perfection, Father. And um, we just pray a blessing over her right now and a little bit of money. And uh, we pray for um, the safe, safe delivery and um, that everything will go according to your plan, Father. Bless this family. Bless this baby. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we just pray for Ellie, and we pray for um, wisdom, too, Lord, uh, wisdom for whatever is going on with her, Lord, that she would have the right doctors that would show her what's going on. And, um, Father, if it's uh, nothing, then we just pray, Lord, for a clear elder sound report, and um, we just command all spirits to go in the name of Jesus, and we just keep the healing over her, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, we just lift up um, the plans uh, that they would progress in your timing, Father. We just ask that uh, meetings would take place this month and that everything would go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Yep. Amen. Well, Father, we lift up Denise and we just pray, Lord, that um, you would touch her heart. We pray that there would be people around her that could speak the gospel to her and Father, we pray for healing for everything physical that's going on inside her body, Father. We just pray that she would be completely whole healed in Jesus' name and that she would give you all the glory, honor, and praise for it. And uh, we just we just pray for a miracle and transformation for her in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Well, Father, we pray for Stacy. We just ask, Lord, that... Um, you would keep her willing, Father, that she would follow through on what she says she wants to do, Father, and um, that she would follow through and make it through these doors, Father. If that's where, where you want her to be, then, Father, we just pray that you would get her here. And uh, we just pray, Lord, for um, just a safe detox and, and uh, just be with her, put her angels around her while she's there. And uh, if she's to be here, bring her safe thing. In Jesus' name, amen. What's up, Niall? And uh, continue with blessings with the radio programs. Father, we lift up Nile and Car Connection, and we ask the Lord for your continued blessings on his program at, at Joy Radio and ESPN. Father, we just ask that you would continue to open up doors for him, that you would continue to bring partnerships with him, Father, and uh, that you would open up the border that he'd be able to come back to church and um, just be able to do what he needs to do, Father, for, for his livelihood and uh, for his spiritual life as well, Father. So we just ask for continued prayer, abundant blessings upon him and his work and his ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't we just thank you? We are so grateful that we can bring our prayers and petitions to you and you bring swift answers to us, Father. We are very, very grateful that we can do this. And I just ask right now, Lord, that you would anoint John. Fill him with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that whatever you've got for him is going to overflow into us and that we are ready and willing to listen to what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Testimonies. We've got a testimony. We've got glory. God is good all the time. we got to <coughs> praise the Lord. Scott. Hallelujah. I just had a Pain in my shoulder and my knee earlier this week, and I had a brother pray for me, and it's a lot better for some of the Praise God. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just looked at the battle of glory yesterday, when we saw it before. And, uh, it's probably the first fourth day. Actually, I <laughs> um, had a lot of fun. 
Concussions the other time? Concussions the other time? Joe. Yeah, being in glory. Um, yesterday, uh, Eddie Hunter was going to my daughter's 16th birthday party. Um, she wanted to do that. She was uh, quite a blessing. I was going to make great things. I'm so grateful for it. Uh, something else happened. speaks life. There's nothing else that comes from us except only and from your word, Father God, and your word through the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us an understanding of what this word says, Lord, because without the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Lord, this word is just a word. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, it changes things. And Lord, we thank you we praise you. Lord, I ask that What's been said here today, Father God, from your word would touch the minds and hearts of each and every one of us, Father God, that we would continue to change in the way we think. Think more like you and less like us, Lord. Give us something here to feed on today, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Fails always Sunday, there's always something that happens Sunday that I was expecting unexpected on Sundays because that's the way the enemy works, right? The enemy uses people to try to just, you know, to divert his glory, you know, and, and what he wants to do on these days, on this day. You know, it's a day of rest, praise God. So, well, yesterday I'm out running in the woods. It was hot. Hot and humid. Hard to suck air and breathe when you're running. When it's humid like that in the woods, especially because you're kind of engulfed with leaves and everything else. So sweat like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> running. And I find myself complaining. Man, jeez. The heat is hot. Getting bit by horse flies. <laughs> then all of a sudden there was a shift. Do you remember when? zero degrees you know, in the top of the house there on a treadmill in the dark because it's dark till 7.30 in the morning. Uh, praise God! <laughs> An appreciation just came over me. Go ahead, bite me! Horse fly. <laughs> I can't breathe so well. I'll be with the Lord. <laughs> he, bring it on. Praise God. There was a shift in me to get that complaining out of me, right? There was a um, a level of gratefulness instead of a level of ungratefulness. But it was a choice I had to make at that moment. You know, God, definitely the Holy Spirit helped me. The Holy Spirit's always speaking to me, especially when I'm running, for some reason. I don't know. That and on the toilet. <laughs> but... He speaks to me in those areas, praise God. So, I always get some words from when I'm running. He said, you know what, what I just showed you, you teach about that tomorrow. I said, okay, praise God. Teach 
about that tomorrow. Where do I go? You know where you go. Go to the Word. Praise the Lord. Of course, but show me some proof. Anyway, he did. But he showed me that, you know, we, we lose our gratefulness, right? We got, I don't know how many times I see that. And, and, and in some cases, it turns out to be fruitful and a blessing. But in most cases, a lot of cases, it doesn't. Where people come in here. People come in, and they're a mess. And they'll do anything to try to be here, to stay here, to do something that's right. But then there's a level of heat and humidity that starts to come upon them, and they lose that gratefulness of where they were when they came in. Right? And I see that all the time. We forget where we were. We're not to live in where we were, but we should never forget. Because otherwise, we have a hard time being grateful. We have a hard time being grateful. Because we're always looking for something else. Always looking for something else. So I, I looked up the definition of grateful. And grateful means to have an appreciation for and a return of. I deleted all the other words. There's all kinds of different parts of the definition. But what struck me was there's an appreciation for and a return of. And that's what gratefulness is. So that we never forget. So I want to go to um, Psalm 126. Psalm 126, this is six verses, I'm going to read the whole psalm. And here it was Israel, they're coming out of Babylon, okay? There's a, as you read the Bible, even the Bible, if you get into some of the history books, you can even get a more dramatic idea of what actually, it was bloody. Bloody and bad. Babies being smashed against rocks, I mean, there was just a lot of violence, and a lot of ugliness. As the wrath of God came upon Israel and Babylon took over. But here they're singing a tune because they've been broken free. They've come out of Babylon and they're free. They're moving in that freedom as they walk through. They go back to Mount to Zion. So it says here, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. That our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forward with weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his seeds with him. Can you put the NLT version up of that, honey? A song of pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. Yes, what amazing things the Lord has done, for, amazing things. What? Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with salts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return the harvest. So here, the Israelites are celebrating. Celebrating after a really mess that they had to deal with. And as you read the Old Testament, you understand what that mess was. And Jeremiah and Isaiah, all the prophets are warning them throughout time to, you know, turn, return to God, but they would not do that. And through a lot of devastation, they've come back to God, and now they're in that place of joy. Of joy. They're grateful. There's a gratitude there on what God is doing. There was weeping in the night, but joy came in the morning. Joy came in the morning. But the problem is we always forget about the weeping, and then the joy becomes duller and duller and duller. Why am I saying that? Because they did it again after this. They did it again after this. For a time, things were cool. But then after time went by, 
as slowly time goes by, we start drifting away from what we're grateful for. We drift away from the gratitude. We become ungrateful. We forget. Jesus told us to do communion for what reason? So that we would never forget. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Why, Jesus? So that you never forget what I did for you. Because we have a tendency to forget. We jump on the next thing that's in front of us. We have a sinful nature in us that keeps leading us in the wrong direction. You have to understand that, and it was said by Maury in communion. There's nothing good in us. You understand that? If you don't come to the place of understanding that there's nothing good in you, you're never going to get anywhere. Because there is nothing good in us. And the only good that comes in us is from Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's when transformation starts to take place. That's when there's change that takes place. That's when we become grateful for the things that he's done for us. And then Jesus said at that point, don't forget. Because if you forget, you start going backwards. Forgetting where you came from. They came from Babylon, but they forgot over time. And the same thing started happening to them again. for the return of, right? Gratefulness. The return of becomes temporary. We only allow that return of to take place as long as we like it, or we feel that we should be doing it, or we let our emotions take over. It's not a true joy. Joy has nothing to do with the feeling, right? Joy has nothing to do with emotion. Joy is something that's given to us by Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you're going to find that joy that comes into you. It has nothing to do with happy. Nothing to do with happy. Joy is there irregardless of any circumstance in your life. Good or bad, someone should be able to see you and not see a difference. Praise God. We all have a tendency to get emotional, right? Death occurs in the family. Emotional, we get emotional. There's a time to mourn. Weeping comes in the, mor in the night. Joy comes in the morning. There is a time to mourn. But is mourning an morning emotion? question for another day. <laughs> Praise God. So here they're happy, go lucky, everything's great. It's like they're living a dream. They're living in this dream because they come out of this torment and they have that feeling. Kind of like the first day. The first day I got the chance to run without a treadmill was awesome this spring. And I was grateful for running down the road because it was still muddy back there. So I just ran down the street into Alden and turned on and came back. And I was just so happy, you know, worshiping God, the music on, enjoy it. But then you see how that, wow, oh, you know, they're running the street. And now I want to run back there. We always want more, right? Oh, it's humid and hot. No, I'm going to take you back to winter and how in the dark freezing, you're running out of treadmill, staring out a window, and it's dark out, you can't see nothing. So that I'm grateful. But see this like there. They, it's their first day. Everything, they're grateful for everything. Even the nations are seeing what God did for them. And then they're repeating it. Yes, God did do this. Yes, God is changing my life. Yes, God has changed my life. I need to be grateful never to forget that. You need to be grateful to never forget that. 
wherever you're at in the process of where you're walking, you've got to never forget that. That we always have to be grateful for what he did for us. Let's go to Psalm 95.
But the gratefulness starts to dissolve. Now we're hungry. There's no Chick-fil-A on there. <laughs> so he gives us manna. He gives them manna. He gives them food. I can go on and on and on. One thing after another, right? You read the word, you see everywhere you go. But the bottom line is, everything they got, they became ungrateful. They kept becoming ungrateful, and then rebellion comes in, and their hearts get hardened. And what does it do? I mean, I'm only going to say this any other way, just to just give you an example. You know, because I don't know how God thinks. My, you know, I can only know how He thinks by His Word and the power of the Holy Spirit. But how do you think God felt? He's doing everything He can for these people, and every time He does this. They do something and they're ungrateful for it. The selfishness. Selfishness leads to ungratefulness. Praise God. And again, they can't rest because they're ungrateful. Throwing them into rebellion and giving them a hardened heart. So the return of, again, is temporary. The appreciation was there, but the return of is temporary. You with me? And that's what happens when we lose the gratefulness of the things that God has done in our life. We walk through this place. We walk, go through this process. We do watch how God works in our lives. But yeah, we forget. We're always forgetting because we, we want what's next before he wants to give it to us. Stay put was a word that was brought up. Be still and know that I am God. Maybe he wants us to be still so we can appreciate him more. We can appreciate him for who he is. So that we can return it without a temporary fix. I'm going to jump into the New Testament. Let's go to Luke 17. Verse 11. to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were leopards who stood far off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorifying God. Fell down on his face, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? Now, Jesus is asking a question, right? But he's God, he knows the answers already. I mean, he's just asking for us to understand. Were there more, not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made, made you well. Praise the Lord. Ten out of ten had the appreciation, but only one gave a return of. Ten out of ten had appreciation because they were healed, but only one had a return of. The return of to come and give thanks to God, to appreciate. The appreciation along with the return of to glorify God because nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Praise the Lord. And it's interesting that it was a Samaritan. A Samaritan is not a religious person. The nine religious ones 
went their way with appreciation without a return on. Same today in the church. Same today in the church. They'll tell you all they've done is an appreciation for God. All these churches I've been dealt with all my years, I've watched it all happen and how most of it, 90% of it is flesh. 90% of it is appreciation, but it's not a true, complete return of. Do you understand? True, complete return of. So that when God and the Holy Spirit are ready to tell you something, even like out there in the woods running, you better appreciate what you have. So you can take the time to listen to God. Yeah. Or mumble and complain about heat and horse flies all day long. Just a simple thing, but it's an appreciation that brings a return off. That's the gratefulness. The gratefulness is the return <laughs> of the appreciation. We're paying back, giving God, because we're not ours anymore. Listen, you weren't bought with a price, whether you want to believe. If you don't want to believe you're Jesus Christ, if you believe in Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord, then you've been bought with a price. You've been redeemed. So that means you're not yours anymore. So anything you do in your life has nothing to do with you anymore. You know, we always want it to be about us. And it's been showing us through the Bible, even with these ten leopards, that the, the religious ones ran their way. The only one that didn't was the one that wasn't religious. And what did he have? He had a relationship with Jesus. That's the difference. Relationship with Jesus. Cut off all the theology from all the religions and everything else you hear from Christianity. Get it all out of there because it's only about relationship. And if you have a true relationship with Jesus, he will teach you. He will counsel you. He will help, for, help you. He will comfort you. All the words Jesus used for the Pericles, the Holy Spirit. Who is Jesus in us? Is it in you? If he's in you, he's teaching you. He's showing you these things. He's telling you in the voice. Listen, don't be stupid. What's stupid mean? You don't have the Holy Spirit. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't rebel. You're rebelling because you're ungrateful. You've lost your gratefulness somewhere down the line, so you've become ungrateful. Now you're rebelling. And you keep going down that road, you're going to have the hardened heart. Where now it's all going to be about business. Religion becomes about business. It's how big is your church, how many square feet you have, how much money you got in the bank. It all becomes about everything else but Jesus. What did Jesus say? He said to the 500 or whoever, he had a big church going on there. He said, listen, you got to eat my body and drink my blood. Oh, murmuring. They were grateful because he was feeding He was feeding them. He was healing them. Murmuring started. Complaining started. All of a sudden, the Bible says, they all walked away. I don't get this. I don't understand it. And I'm not willing to stick around. Let's go. Let's go find Oprah. Let's go find somebody <laughs> else. Let's go find someone else to follow. Because this is just too much for me. So the twelve are still standing there. And Jesus looks at Peter. He says, you want to go too? Jesus could care less how big his church was. you understand? Because as it was said in the word earlier after worship, the Lord's looking for all those hearts that are fully committed to him. Not ones that want to play church but that are fully committed to him, that understand what that gratefulness is. And as they do that, they return it back. The appreciation for what he did returns it back. And how do we turn it, return it back? Jesus said, lay down our life. Lay down our life. Become a holy living sacrifice. It means it's not about you anymore. It's about what you can do for someone else. A holy living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. So yeah, it's interesting how the nine ran away. But the one that had relationship, he glorified God. And glorifying God was a gratitude. There was a gratefulness and a gratitude what Jesus did. Listen, Jesus cast the devil out of me that changed my life. 
and used a man in front of me to cast the devil out of me that I never even believed. I thought he was nuts and it was never going to be there. But when it left, my whole life changed. No more addiction, no more anger, no more, no more nothing. And the house was empty. So then Jesus says, fill it with the word. And as the word came in, his love came in. And his love came in to transform. It was all supernatural. That it had to take place. And that's the relationship and the gratitude. So you never lose that gratitude. You never lose it. The devil wants you to forget about it. But you've got to remember, remember, remind the devil who he is and where he's at. He's under here somewhere in your foot. And you go back to the gratefulness that God has put you put in your life. The gratitude. The little things. The big things. All things. Good and bad. The gratitude. How we can take a moment of time and see how he's taken the whole life. All that was bad and good. And everything had to take place in order for us to get to where we are for such a time as this. And here we are. Now we're ready to make our next move with gratitude. Praise God. I want to shift gears. Let's go to 1 Samuel 2, 1 and 2. Hannah. So you know the story of Hannah. If you don't, read it. And the thing is, is she's being harassed. The two wives... Husband had two wives and Hannah couldn't have kids. She's weeping, she's mourning, she's having a hard, she's really dealing with this, right? She cries out to God. If I could have a baby, if I could have a son, I'd give him to you. And that's what happened. God blessed her. It was what they call the Hannah prayer. The prayer that she prays back to God in gratefulness. In gratefulness. But I'm just going to do the first two verses. You can read the whole prayer in your own time. But the first two verses jumped out at me. When Hannah says, and she prays, and she says, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn, which means strength, is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Praise the Lord. There's a woman that's so grateful. So grateful God has blessed her. And she takes Samuel and she gives him right back to God. You see the return on. There was an appreciation in her prayer and she took and returned back to God, Samuel. Appreciation with a return on to give Samuel back. And in doing that, God blessed her with more kids. He blessed her. Three things. The heart. The heart is where everything's at. What comes from our heart what defiles us, right? Jesus said, not our mouth and words. It's too late. You already got it from the heart. The heart is where the spirit is. The heart is where our spirit is. The heart is where the Holy Spirit and our spirit connect. The heart is where we grow. We grow and then it kind of re comes up into our mind and our thought process. If we do it any other way, we're only getting head knowledge. But the heart is important and she knew that. And the horn, her horn is the strength. All strength comes from him. And the word smile here is broken down to mean a mouth open wide to devour. To smile, knowing that, you know what, God's got our enemies. He's going to devour anything because we trust in him. There's a gratitude and a gratefulness in God and who he is and what he's done in our life. We remind ourselves, bring us back to that. Hannah's there in that place. And she's returning Samuel to God. And God's using Samuel in a mighty way. Mighty way. She gives him over to Eli, the high priest.
There was weeping in the night, but joy came in the morning for Anna. You look back early on where in, in the story where she would come go every year, they would go to the temple and pray. And it says at one time she's murmuring words. And Eli thought she was drunk. He wouldn't talk to her. So I'm not drunk, I'm, I'm crying to God. If our heart's in the right place, I'm talking our heart, not our head. God can see a manipulator a mile away. But if our heart's in the right place, he hears us. And he answers us. And the gratefulness pours in like he did with Hannah. Her whole being, her heart, her strength, her smile, everything drew the appreciation of remembrance of what God had done for her. So in that appreciation of gratefulness, she returned it. Returned it. That's what we need to do with ourselves. We need to return ourselves to God because we're not our own. And as we lose our gratefulness, we lose that. We're not returning it. Well, how do I return myself? How do you, what we talked about earlier, lay down, yourself, lay down your life for your friend. Humility, humble yourself. Instead of thinking you have to one-up people, you're doing a worldly perspective which is taking you into ungratefulness. Do you understand? And the ungratefulness isn't going to get you anywhere. Like I said earlier, humility will diffuse anything the devil wants to throw at you. Because true humility doesn't warrant a response. It doesn't warrant a reaction. Jesus did nothing. And the whole time he was being accused, taken from one place to another. He did nothing to say, I'm God. And you know what? He gets this too far, I'm going to wipe you out of here. He didn't say anything like that. Nothing. <laughs> Matter of fact, when Peter cut off the ear of the soldier, he walked over to heal him. <coughs> Not only did the healing take place of the ear, but it takes place of the heart, right? After something done like that, supernaturally, it doesn't say much about that soldier, but I bet you he really thought about who Jesus was. The level of kindness and humility to take place. Thinking of someone else instead of himself, even though it's time for him to go on the cross. It's time for him to have to endure. And he's not panicking and going all over the place. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is going to happen to me. He's looking at the man who got his ear cut off to heal him. He's not looking at himself even then. That's what God wants from you and me. But that's very difficult if we don't have a level of gratefulness that God wants us to have, that appreciation that we can return it back. Go to Psalm 86. Verses 12 and 13. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forevermore. For great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol, from the depths of hell. He's our deliverer. He's our deliverer. And you know, the gratefulness, when we start losing that gratefulness, we really need to go right back to the cross. We need to go right back to the cross. If we can't get through all the other things to bring us back into that gratefulness, we need to go right back to the cross. Right from the beginning of what Jesus did for us at the cross. And at that place, at the cross, 
There our attitude, our appreciation is brought to a higher level, an altitude of gratitude. How can it not? If you're a true believer in Jesus Christ, how can it not? If you think, you sit there and you meditate, you have a relationship like that one leper had, you're glorifying God and he knows your heart. Listen man, Jesus has a relationship with you. I know I have a relationship with Jesus. You've got to know that you have a relationship with Jesus. An epignosis no, a supernatural no. You've got to know that you have that relationship so that when you go there with him, you're going to see the cross and know what he did for us on the cross. How could that not change our attitude to bring us into a higher level of attitude so we can grow in our gratitude? You've heard me say many times, gratitude determines the altitude of our attitude. Well, it's the other way around. It's the attitude. We're having a hard time appreciating what Jesus has done for us in our life. And then we start becoming ungrateful. We start rebelling. And everything becomes difficult. Life becomes difficult. We start distancing ourselves from God. We've got to go back to the cross. We have to go back to the cross. So that we can bring back into remembrance what Jesus said and what Maury said earlier. We have to do this so that we never forget, people. We never forget. The Israelites were loving it coming out of Babylon. I'm loving coming out of the darkness of running at, at, in the dark in, in a treadmill, coming out onto the road. But you can lose that appreciation pretty quickly. If we don't continue going back and remembering and not forgetting, constantly remembering. That's what Jesus said, you will remember to me. Nothing else matters but the cross. Now, a lot of flesh going on in the world right now. Black lives matter, all lives matter, everybody's got matter, matter, matter. The only thing that matters is Jesus, nothing else matters. <laughs> and if we had that truly center in our life, then nothing else would matter. We would have rest and an understanding and not all the craziness that's going on. It just keeps being more amplified and magnified because the devil's in the middle of it all. And who is it? Jesus. Why? Because we've drifted away from him. We've become ungrateful. We're even burning churches down. These crazy people are burning churches down. They don't even know why they're burning them down. Because the devil's leading the whole situation. When you come to a place of understanding that nothing matters other than Jesus, then you bring on that rest of understanding on who he is and who we're not. But it's hard to do if we don't want to return the appreciation. It becomes difficult when we don't want to return the appreciation. And listen, it's not about how you want to return. It's how God wants to return it through you. Amen? A lot of people love to do stuff all day long. But you know, you're not actually doing what God wants you to do. Why? Because a lot of times it's not going to feel good. Most of the time it's not going to feel good because God wants to teach you something. Appreciation with a return is what we need to do. Praise God. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. some people come into this program and how grateful they are that they just came in the door. They don't have to pay nothing. They don't have to have insurance. They don't have to have nothing because God's got it all under control. But then how that ungratefulness just starts to seep in. And we let that pride take over. And now we're bigger than God. We're bigger than what's going on here for sure. I got it all down pat. No, you don't. 
we're forgetting. We're forgetting. And in that forgetting, we become ungrateful. Praise God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 19. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. I say it again, gratefulness is not above circumstances. Or is, is, sorry, it's not about circumstances. It doesn't matter the circumstances we're in, right? Rejoice always. Rejoice always. But see, we let the feelings and emotions come in that allow the enemy to come in to bring thoughts into our head that are not grateful for what God is doing. Look at Job's old wife said, curse God and die. Curse God and die. Probably the closest person to him on the planet, his wife, is telling him to curse God and die. He's not going to lose his gratefulness. Questions it, but he doesn't lose it. We can't let circumstances dictate our life. We can't let circumstances... If God calls you into a place like this, he puts you here for a reason. For what? To change your life. To become who he wants you to be, not who you want to be. That's what he's wanted all along. He doesn't want you to be who you are. He wants you to be who he wants you to be. And you have to work at that. Because there's going to be weeping in the night. But then joy comes in the morning with every victory that you pass through when he's starting to show you this is what I want you to do, not this. This is who I want you to be, not that. It's not going to feel good because it's not about feelings. Jesus had joy, the Bible says, to go to the cross. How is it possible to have a joy to go get hung on the cross and die? He had it. And he gave that same joy to me and you. So if that joy is in me and you, that appreciation and the return of gratefulness is in me and you, how can you let any little thing take you out of position to bring you in ungratefulness? Or bring you into a rebellion? No, I don't have to be here anymore. God doesn't interrupt himself. You came pleading that you wanted help. Oh, I don't have to pay nothing? No, if you don't have any money, don't pay. I don't have any insurance. That's okay. It's all good. Because God is doing it. But we lose it. It's all good. Just like Israelites coming out of Babylon. It's all good. But as time goes on, just like here, as time goes on in nine months, it's not good anymore. Or even after nine months. You could be here two, three years. And you come to a place of thinking that you're above everything that's going on. I don't know how many times I've talked to Guy about, Pastor Guy about that. Down there. Same things happen. It's the same kind of people everywhere. Different names, different faces, but it's the same thing. An ungratefulness takes place. We forget where we came from and who we were and what God has done for us. So that appreciation dwindles, so how can we possibly return it? You can't. You won't. So it's not about the circumstances. True gratefulness has nothing to do about the circumstance you're in. Nothing. What happens is when we lose focus on Jesus. We lose focus on him. How often? And it's happened to myself. When things get bad. When you get hurt physically, there's a lot of pain. You, lose, you, you take your focus off Jesus and focus on the pain. But we have to refocus ourselves on Jesus. And watch what he can do for any kind of pain. Because <clears throat> he's the master physician. We gotta trust in him though, right? Praise 
Praise God. When we don't focus on, we become ungrateful in everything. See, here it says in everything give thanks, but we become ungrateful. We become ungrateful in everything. We start murmuring. We start complaining. We can never enjoy the moment. We're always looking ahead. We can never enjoy the moment. That's what happens when we become ungrateful. We start looking ahead and can't be in the moment. We have a hard time, because that's what rest is. Rest is, stay put, be in the moment. That's rest. When we're resting with God, nothing's going to shake us. Nothing's going to shake us, because we're in the moment. But we're always thinking ahead of God. I mean, I see that all the time. We got, geez, we're two miles ahead of God. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand holds me. And we get ahead of him. He's behind us. So he's not to be seen. And we're always the last ones to admit that we're getting ahead of God. We're always the last to admit that we hate to hear the words, slow down. Be in the moment. Stay put. Be still. Know that I am God. We don't like to hear that because we're always we're already ahead of God. I got this all. You got nothing. You've become ungrateful. Now you're rebelling. Now you're rebelling. Because your gratefulness is out the window. We forget. But Jesus pleads with us to remember. To remember so that we won't forget. Who we are, where we came from, what he's doing in our life. James 1.17 gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Praise God. You see, if we fail to come to an understanding that everything comes from God, we're always going to be at conflict with Him. There's always going to be a conflict. Does that mean you're not, it doesn't mean you're not saved? But there's always going to be conflict in your life. That's what I see in a lot of these churches. These people go to the church, they go five times a, day, a week. It's all messed up. There's no stability, there's no rest there. They're going to these things, their functions, they're going to they're the church, they're making it look good. But there's conflict there. Because they're not trusting him in everything. We gotta trust God in everything, no matter what's going on in our life. We gotta be able to rest in anything. And anxiousness. Anxiousness is a big one. I wanna we all get anxious. In. What does it, Paul tell us about anxiousness? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in what? Prayer. Prayer, supplication, pleading to God. This isn't who I am. God doesn't give me the spirit of fear, this anxiety. He gives me power, he gives me love, and he gives me a sound mind. We have to read. Go back to what the Word is telling us and believe what the Word says. Power, love, Psalm 9. This is who I am. Where did it come from? Well, let me tell you, the cross. Let me go back to the cross. And from the cross, I'm going to go back to how I got deliverance. How this mean-looking demon left me and I changed my life. And God came to, dwell, to live with me, in me. To restructure me so that I would never forget. So I could be grateful for horse flies. <laughs> Praise God, I don't know if I'm that far yet. <laughs> I'm still working at it. Working out myself, actually. 
puddle with fear and trembling. The horse flies too. <laughs> God has got to be our source for everything. He's got to be our source for everything. We've got to be focused on him for everything. And if we're really there, we're going to be grateful. Nothing's going to take us out of position. Trust in the Lord. Don't put your confidence in man. Amen. Amen. You're not here to please your brothers. You're not here to please your, late, your sisters. You're here to please God. Amen. And as you please God, he's pleased with you and he changes you. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted, built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it, with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. To be rooted in appreciation for him. To have it rooted deep down inside of us. To have that root that nothing can really cut off very easily. The root of appreciation comes from the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Every time you say thank you, Jesus, it should be a remembrance of what he did on the cross. Nothing but his blood. Nothing but his blood. Because that blood gave us life. The blood gave us life. Thank you for the cross. That's the root in us, to be rooted deep down in. But to get rooted, there's got to be a deeper depth of death. A deeper depth of death is going to give us a better root. It's necessary. Otherwise, rebellion is always going to come. Rebellion's always going to come. Pride's always going to come. We're never going to get rid of pride. But we can really suppress it to the point where it's not going to manifest as much. Because we're rooted in Him. We're rooted in Jesus. We're not forgetting what He did for us. Keep going back to Him. Keep going back to the last thing that He's done in your life. So that you can have an appreciation, so that you can return it. That's what gratefulness is. An appreciation of and a return on. A return to. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Last verse. Then we take a 20-minute break and come back for two more hours. Hallelujah. That's all I need. Hebrews 12. Verses 27 to 29. You know what? NLT version. I don't know the way the NLT had it. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshaken, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. And King James says he's a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. <clears throat> what's, what, what's unshaken? His kingdom. It's happening now. Coronavirus, everything the government's telling you, everyone falls into it. Listen, I'm not speaking a rebellion here. I'm speaking truth, okay? If God is with us, who can be against us? We have to be careful what the government tells us. Because it's a democracy. It's not a kingdom. I'm a citizen of God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. I'm a sojourner. I'm an ambassador. We're representatives of God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Here in this planet, in this country, in New York. So Jesus said, give Caesar with his, but he get God with God's. <laughs> and as you get closer to the understandings and everything that's taking place, there's a lot of unshakenness going on. And I'm talking about in the church. People are just about rattled all over the place. But he's coming for the unshaken. He's got the unshakable things will remain. And what is the unshakable things? That's me and you. 
remaining in him with that appreciation to return it back so that nothing's going to shake us. Nothing's going to take us out of position. We're going to see things for what they are. We've got to be careful with the mark. We've got to be careful with different things that the devil's going. Even the elect are going to get fooled. What does the elect mean? You're going to see a lot of these preachers that you follow on TV are going to get fooled. That's what that means. People are going to fall into this because so-and-so said this. Or so-and-so did that. If you don't have, if you're not the one instead of the nine, if you're not the one that has a relationship with Jesus, you're going to have a hard time detecting that. The nine religious ones took off. There was no gratefulness of appreciation to return of. The one leper, the one that had a relationship with Jesus, is the one that wasn't shaken. Because he gives us rest. He gives us rest when we really trust in him and we're grateful for who he is and who we're not. Praise God. For of him and through him and to him will be all the glory. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, well, thank you for, for your word today, Father God, for all the things that are taking place, Father, that, Lord, we can trust in you. Lord, that we can take us, Lord, to a different level of appreciation so that we can return it back to you, Father God. Show us to never forget <laughs> Never forget what you did on the cross, Lord. That would always be refreshed in our memory. It will always be that your blood has set us free. It will always be that your blood went down the tree to choke the enemy. Never let us forget, Lord. Let us never forget. So as Hannah rejoiced, as Paul rejoiced, as other believers rejoiced in the word and are out there all over the planet, Lord, let us rejoice. Rejoice in everything, giving you joy. And giving you thanks and appreciation for who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, I ask that you bless, bless our time in the week ahead, Father God, and all the things that we're doing. That you would continue guiding us and protecting us, Lord, and leading our way. As for travel mercies for those that have come from afar, as they leave tonight, Father God, protect them in their travels, Lord. And Father, bless all the food that's been prepared for our bodies and nourishment, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.